Welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the first part of the Lotus Super 7 Series 2 build from Tamiya. Firstly, don't forget to hit the like button, press subscribe if you haven't done so already, and even if you are subscribed, clicking the bell button will keep you notified for future videos. You can see here that the chassis of the car is unlike almost anything I have built and it wouldn't fit to the uh, Tamiya paint stand so I made sure to leave part of the sprue on the front so that I could clip it on and then spray paint it that way. The required colours are shown here although I used TS43 instead of 9. Once I'd primed the body I looked around to make sure that there were no parts where the sprues had been joined on or any flash and I did the same to this part of the bonnet. The bonnet I did in this kind of sunshine yellow colour, which I would later mask over and do in the same green as I did the rest of the body, which is Tamiya TS43 Racing Green. I then did part of the interior in flat aluminium, also from Tamiya, whilst I did the inside of the door cards in hull red from Vallejo. The suspension arms are done in Tamiya semi-gloss black and you have to bend them slightly to fit into these holes. Look at the instructions very carefully when doing this process. I then stuck them into place using a little bit of Tamiya thin cement. The micro tweezer is very useful for jobs like this. Getting the shock absorbers into place is a very difficult job if you have, you know, even average size hands like I do. There are a few more slots to fit the top of the suspension arms into place, and then they were secured with a little more thin poly cement. The top of the shock absorbers could then be glued onto the pins on the upper suspension arms. The front wheels have disc brakes which you uh, clip onto the axles and now it's time to look at the photo etch parts. Only the front brakes are discs with the back one being drum brakes so that's why there are only two uh, disc brake parts. Both of the photo etch discs look exactly the same, but it's important to test fit these first before gluing them into place. I used a tiny little bit of uh, CA super glue on the end of the cocktail stick to fix them into place and then tried to use the tweezers so that I didn't get anything of my fingertips onto the super glue. Looks pretty good. Look at the next part of the instructions very carefully. You can clip on one of the disc brakes to this bar that goes through the middle, steering part of the steering mechanism. Then fit the axle into place in between the two suspension arms. And only then, once you've done this, can you then fit the axle and disc brake onto the other end. This was quite fiddly. Just be gentle and patient. As you will have to bend some of the parts a little bit, but you don't want to force them so much that they might snap. When finished, the wheels will both turn in unison a little bit, but again, don't force this either. There you are. There are two small bars here that need to be fit to the rear uh, axles before gluing into place, which then clip onto part of the body. Again, the tweezers are really useful for this. I can't stress how small this car is. A 
decided to glue the engine together before painting it. Putting it together like this before painting means that you don't have to worry about the glue ruining the paint. I also used these clips to make sure that the fit was really tight. I drilled some holes where the um, ignition wires would go, which I'll add later on. Holes are made were about a millimetre wide. First glued the oil pan to the bottom. The main block of the engine was done in gloss green and the gearbox was done in a medium semi-gloss grey. Put the timing belts onto the front. This fit wasn't that great, um, but a bit of assistance and they were fine. The, there is a nice little hole for the distributor cap. However, it, you couldn't really drill to the top of the distributor cap, so I just super glued the ignition wires to the top, and I then put the exhaust pipes into the side of the engine block and to give them a little bit of, of a shave first, just to fit into the holes nicely. I'll give this a dark wash afterwards when I'm finished. The cover here is done in the flat aluminium. And now it's time for the first decal. You can see here decal one, which you can't quite see, but it's a very small white Cosworth. To make it look more like the real car, I made the nameplate black in order to let the words stand out a little bit better. Put a little bit of micro set into place. And once it was set down, I then put a little bit of micro sole over the top. I wish my camera would focus a little better, but I assure you it is there. Now there were time for some more photo etch parts for the engines. These air valves here have firstly a photo etch kind of panel that goes onto the end, which I again stuck on with some super glue. It's important to line up the holes because there are then these kind of trumpet pieces which need to fit into each one. These are very, very small and they are all separate pieces. So it's good to do this all at once. Put a little bit of super glue in each hole. And I decided to use my fingers for this rather than the tweezers. It'll fit really nicely. I decided to just flatten them down a little bit to make sure that they were all in nicely. I really like how shiny and reflective these photo etch parts are. When you fit this into place, both this and the uh, exhaust pipes need to be horizontal so that they fit nicely into the engine bay. There's then a framework that needs to go into the back. This will also provide the support for the spare tire. And when the engine goes in, it needs to meet up with the drive shaft. There is a little pin for this, so it's okay. There's also two pin holes for the engine on either side. I'm pretty happy with how it's all going in here. In my next video, I will move on to doing the seats and the seat belts and other parts of the interior. Here is the car with the engine next to it. And here are some closer up shots of the engine. Note the Cosworth badge on the top. It's a pretty nice engine. And here I added a little more of a dark wash with the panel line accent. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon.